everyone, welcome to my new channel. This is Jay from Coding with Jaybird, where I upload weekly tutorials to help build your confidence in coding. This is my first video, and I'll be focusing on what is JavaScript and how do we use it? Let's dive in. JavaScript is a client-side scripting language. Now, what does that actually mean? Client-side simply means that the JavaScript code is processed by the user's browser and not on the web server. Client is another word for the end user who will be viewing the web page. By processing the JavaScript code in the browser, we're able to get much faster response times when the user interacts with the web page. This happens because the JavaScript code doesn't need to communicate with the server. Now, what exactly do I mean by a user interacting with the web page? Think of every time you click a button to do something on a web page, such as log into a site or add something to a shopping cart. Well, JavaScript allows for all of that. Traditionally, when a user accessed a link, an HTTP request was sent to the server through the browser. This would then return an HTML document with all the content that the user would see until the user navigated to another web page. Back then, there was no updating to the web page during the user interaction. These were simply static web pages. What you see is what you get. Now we have user interaction and fetching of data without reloading the page. And that is just one of the wonderful things that JavaScript allows us to do. We now have dynamic web pages. Let's create a simple project in our code editor. I'll be using Visual Studio Code for most of my tutorials. Let's get started. Now I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop and I'm going to call this JS Tutorial 1. And I'm going to drag this onto VS Code so that we can edit our files here. Now you can see the JS tutorial folder is open in the Explorer on the left. Now we're going to need an HTML markup file that we can view in the browser. So I'll create an index.html file and using Emmet, which comes preloaded in VS Code, I'm going to type exclamation mark tab to get the starter template. Now I like to always update the title rather than leaving it as a default document. So let's call this JavaScript tutorial for beginners. And so that we can see something in our browser, let's create an H1 tag called my first JavaScript code. Okay, so everything looks good so far. Now, where would we write JavaScript code in our HTML file? There are three locations. The first option, which is the best option, is at the bottom of the body, but just above the closing body tag. So this is our best option, where the script tag is at the bottom of the body tag. So we write JavaScript code in what's called script tags, like so. And it's common practice to put an attribute type equals text forward slash JavaScript. We can write an inline comment in JavaScript by typing two forward slashes. This is an inline comment in JavaScript. Now let's create our first line of JavaScript code. I'm going to send an alert message to the browser window and I can do so by typing alert round brackets. And now these round brackets are expecting a string value. So we could use double quotation or more common practice is to use single quotation. So let's type something. Most developers would start by writing hello world. Let's be a bit different and write hello jaybird. Now every line of JavaScript code should typically be followed by a semicolon. Let's test this in the browser. I'm going to save this document and open the live server. And as we can see, our alert message shows, hello, Jaybird. That's great. Upon hitting OK, we can see the rest of our HTML document, which says my first JavaScript code. Now let's go back to VS Code and write some more JavaScript. Another place where we could write some JavaScript code would be in the head of the document like so. Option two, the script tag in the head tag. 
Now, there are specific use cases for having this. When we write JavaScript code here, we're doing this because we want the JavaScript code to load prior to the HTML being parsed. Let's write a block level comment in here. And we would do that by typing forward slash star and ending it with star forward slash. This is a block, oops, block level comment in JavaScript. Now, when do we use this option? This is used when you want the JavaScript to load prior to the HTML being parsed. All right, now there's one other location where we could play some JavaScript code, and that would be in line with our HTML. Now we can create a button tag and call this button, click me, and we can add some JavaScript code to the opening tag of the button, like so, on click equals, and let's say this is some method called button clicked. And it's a method because of the round brackets. Not to worry, you're not supposed to understand this quite yet. This is just our first JavaScript tutorial. We'll come back to this in future tutorials. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that JavaScript code can be written in line with our HTML code. However, this is not recommended. Inline JavaScript code is not recommended. Mixing JavaScript code inside of our HTML document is a bad idea, and it makes for confusing and redundant code. So let's try not to use it. Now let's add one more line of JavaScript code beneath our alert method. I'm going to log a message to the browser's console by typing console.log and this is a method that will also look for a string value. And this time, let's say, hello, Tim. Now you're probably wondering who Tim is. Tim's my debugging duck that I've had for several years now. He's essentially a rubber duck that I keep on my desk and I use him to talk out my code whenever I'm stuck with something. So when things aren't going my way and I can't really find my errors in code, I'll speak out my code or talk out my code processes to Tim and usually in discussing them, I figure out the solution. So let's say hello to Tim. And let's not forget our semicolon at the end of our JavaScript line. And I'll save this and we'll run this in the browser. Great, everything looks wonderful. There's our alert message. And upon hitting OK, I see the H1 tag and a click me button. Now the click me button doesn't do anything yet because we haven't typed the JavaScript code for it. So how do we see the message in the console? Well, we can see the developer tools by typing option command J on a Mac, or if you're a Windows user, you can see it by typing shift control J. And here on the right, you can see hello Tim, and it's coming from HTML code line 26. We can ignore this uncaught reference error because button clicked isn't a method that we've created yet. So obviously the browser is looking for something that doesn't exist. Now going back into our VS code, we can see sure enough, line 26 is where we've sent the message from, hello, Tim. All right, that's it for this intro to JavaScript tutorial. I had a fun time making this first video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you did, please hit that like button so I can continue to make more tutorials for you. If you'd like to see more coding tutorials, please subscribe to my channel where I'll be uploading new videos each week. Hope to see you all soon in my next video. Bye for now. Keep on coding.